Uh, I'm Dr. Nicolas Courtois. I'm a cryptologist. Uh, I work at the University College of London, uh, and uh, I teach um, uh, a number of topics uh, in cryptography, applied cryptography, smart cards, and, and payment. So uh, I'm asked here to answer questions about uh, security of Bitcoin. Uh, I have spent my whole life in cybersecurity and in cryptography. So I teach uh, these topics in uh, London. Um, so Bitcoin is an open source system. And I have always been very skeptical with respect to security of open source systems. Open source systems are not secure in general. They cannot be. People in private sector spend tens of billions of dollars on security. And people in government, like the NSA, spend a lot of money on security. They do not always do it for the benefit of individuals, but they do it for the benefit of the industry in their country. And they do it for their own benefit and for national defense and so on. So how can a system in which developers you know, uh, can contribute arbitrary code be secure? It's a big problem. Uh, Bitcoin has this anonymous founder syndrome that nobody knows who the Bitcoin creator is. And this is actually a problem because if there is a, something very bad in Bitcoin, like the backdoor, there is no one to blame. So um, obviously it's not that bad because most Bitcoin developers are not anonymous, so you can know these people. But um, open source systems are only secure if people who develop them can be trusted and they are proper professionals and are doing a good job. Otherwise they will not be secure. It's absolutely not true that a system such as Bitcoin will be secure just because people will find bugs in it. People will never ever find bugs. For example, in cryptography, nobody except extremely few experts um, will know whether this sort of cryptography is secure. Nobody knows. And the experts maybe will not tell you because, you know, their interest is to for Bitcoin cryptography to be broken and they will be able to publish a next paper in the next crypto conference. Okay, so uh, you can only trust something like Bitcoin if you can trust cryptography and if it has sufficient robust robustness built in for um, this um, open source system to succeed, which is not obvious. So some people believe that Bitcoin is very secure and uh, many experts are extremely skeptical and think that it could collapse overnight because, for example, the cryptography is not, uh, is not a very standard form of cryptography. Okay, so overall, um, uh, Bitcoin needs to um, open larger debate about the security of these open source systems and have more discussion with academics and security experts to, for the security of the systems to improve, which so far has been very, very poor. I mean, typically there are thefts of bitcoins and the public is informed about the mechanisms behind these thefts after the thefts happen and after the bitcoins are stolen. That's not the right way. In my research, I'm trying to inform the public about how bitcoins could be stolen before they are stolen so that people can implement some, com some countermeasures. So a lot of people worry about quantum computers because if quantum computers are built, a lot of cryptography that we know is going to be broken and this is largely correct. However, there are very interesting things which need to be said. First of all, even without quantum crypt computers, most of cryptography we know is broken. So I am a sort of professional code breaker. I have broken many things and I can promise to break some, to break some more things in the future. So even without quantum computers, something like Bitcoin is bound to be broken by professional code breakers sooner or later, in five, ten years maybe. Okay, so, so uh, cryptography is uh, very fragile and typically uh, something which is designed by a professional will be broken with high probability. Something which is designed by an amateur 
will be almost always broken. Okay, so um, Bitcoin cryptography is fragile and uh, quantum computers will certainly break Bitcoin and allow other people to steal everybody's Bitcoin. But before that happens, probably um, 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 there will be many more security problems in, in Bitcoin. Um, it is possible but not easy to change the hash function in Bitcoin because it's used by miners and miners they build uh, ASIC machines. They have um, uh, invested a lot of money into manufacturing very highly specialized devices. So if today you change the hash function in Bitcoin, a lot of businesses will be out of business and it's very complicated to do. So the, the, the hash function in Bitcoin is problematic. However, the hash function in Bitcoin is probably not that weak. So Satoshi was kind of convinced that the hash function in Bitcoin is relatively robust and he has written about this and it's probably not that bad. Um, um, there is another part of cryptography in Bitcoin which is the digital signature scheme. This part, it will be much easier to change uh, and it could be done overnight, could be done today. It will be very easy to upgrade the Bitcoin cryptography on the digital signature ECDSA elliptic curve site. Um, and you could basically keep accepting the old signatures and at the same time issue new more secure signatures. So this part is actually very easy, but not the hash part. The hash part is, is not possible to change without doing some sort of earthquake for the current Bitcoin uh, commercial industry. People who live from mining, people who live from making mining devices. If the elliptic curve in Bitcoin is broken, you could steal Bitcoins for a certain fraction of Bitcoin users. But not for those who are wise enough never to use their Bitcoin key twice. Which is a very interesting possibility, which was uh, built in in Bitcoin by the original creator of Satoshi Nakamoto. And it's, very, very, it's really, really brilliant um, property of Bitcoin that actually you can not reveal your public key in Bitcoin. Um, so until it is uh, uh, until uh, um, it is basically too late. When your public is revealed, uh, your bitcoins are already transferred elsewhere. So they should use uh, uh, they should use wallet applications in which uh, each bitcoin address is used only once, which is complicated because if you do that, typically you use HD wallets. An HD wallet is a Bitcoin key management standard, BIP-032, which has a lot of additional security problems, which I have studied in my research. So therefore, it's not an obvious choice because um, there are still many ifs to find a really professional and really secure solution which implements this. So, um, um, so Trezor wallets and Bitcoin smart cards such as Ledger are among the industry leaders today in people who are trying to secure the Bitcoin network. Okay, they are still underdeveloped. If you look at some advanced attacks that are known in applied cryptography, so they still need quite a few years of development to become a fully fledged uh, professional security product but they are getting there at a very high speed and they are not starting from zero, they are starting from mature industries such as French smart card industry which has for 15 and more years developed secure products. Okay, So they have very good uh, basis to build a secure product but I wouldn't say that the current product is yet fully professional security product but it's probably the best uh, um, if you look at what we have today on the Bitcoin market. It's probably the best. So everything is relative. I think this, these are still the uh, uh, these companies are leaders in Bitcoin security, and no one comes close. I'm talking about Trezor and Ledger, for example. 
Natomiast jeżeli mówimy o wyższych kwotach, ta tendencja już się obraca. Często okazuje się, że zakup w naszym kantorze jest dużo bardziej opłacalny ze względu na fakt, że nasz kantor zintegrowany jest z dużą ilością giełd, co zapewnia zebranie wszystkich najkorzystniejszych ofert z poszczególnych giełd, co również zwiększa głębokość tego, tego rynku.